Listening is a performative act. 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 Listening is an act of trust. 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 It is April 15, 2014. Uh, It is assumed that today is the total moon eclipse. It is 10 minutes before 2 in the morning. The clock is programmed for half past 3 que es cuando el eclipse se ve completo. When the eclipse is full. But I woke up earlier for a series of dreams. Serie de sueños quite vivid. Bastante vividos. I have not had such vivid dreams for a long time. Cuando me levanté eran 10 minutos antes que dieran las dos. In the morning, la luna, el eclipse de luna. The moon, the eclipse of the moon is partial. Y lo único que puedo And the only thing que I can think about is what people could be doing in a time like this. Je suis petite. Je dois avoir 5 ans. Et euh, 
Sí, yo tengo que echar eso, ¿no? Mi sueño es un sueño amarillo, donde por ser ya flotamos. Soñé que estaba en un campo todo verde, en plena tarde en Berlín, donde hasta ahora no conozco. Soñé que estaba en un campo si es un rêve, como podría explicar esa pieza, es que se te hace preocupado, pero no me interesa. Es una cosa que se pasa sobre mi vida. Cuando estaba muy pequeño, me interesa hasta el año de 7 años, por ejemplo. Wake up. Search for simplicity. Listen to the silence of the movement. Hello? Hello, is this Julian Barber? It is, yes, yes. Um, and and uh, are you wanting to talk now? Are you are you available to talk? Yes, I think so. Somehow I was expecting you to call one hour later. Perhaps we've got some confusion <laughs> in the time. Yes, there is indeed. I'm here. Who are you? I'm Julian Barber. I'm a, a theoretical physicist, and my main interest is what is time, and does time really exist? What time is it? 
Well, uh, there is a church clock out here, and the church clock has just struck. So if you ask me what time it is, uh, my immediate answer is it's, it's a, what corresponds to the church clock striking. And when the church clock was striking, I'm sitting in a room, and there are trees outside, the sun is shining, which is surprising for our very wet summer in England. And all of that is really what the universe looks like at the moment for me. So my personal time, it's what the universe looks like when that church clock struck. So that was, it, it struck just after you asked, the, just before you asked the question. So I relate time to everything I can see in the universe. A clock is a mechanical device which uh, is, doesn't really make sense in itself. If you think about it, why do we have clocks? Why do we wear watches? It's because we want to keep appointments. So a clock, uh, you can't define a clock in isolation. You, you, all you can say is that Two clocks are useful if they will always give the same reading or to such a good accuracy the difference doesn't matter. So you can't define a clock by itself. A clock is a mechanical device which will march in step with any other mechanical device which is constructed to be a clock. How do you imagine a world without clocks would be? In many ways, I think it would be a more relaxed world because clocks are a bit of a menace. They make us all get up in the morning, go to work. <laughs> and uh, uh, I'm, I'm not sure whether clocks are such a, a, a benefit to humanity. And in fact, uh, I think it was the Pope in the year 1000 uh, ordered that clocks should be put on, on church towers. And, and the idea was to keep the population working properly and coming to church at six times and so forth. So it was very much a beginning of, uh, of a regimentation of humanity. So I'm not sure that that's such a good idea for human beings.
But uh, here it is, 11.20. So it seems like I am talking to you from your past and you are answering from my future. So what is now? When is now? Well, uh, luckily light and electrical signals travel very fast. So essentially we're, we're talking to each other more or less instantaneously. It's just that uh, the sun is higher in the sky in, uh, in Mexico than it is, is here, or it, it's still before midday in your part of the world and it's after midday here. But that uh, it doesn't alter the fact that the Earth is somewhere in some position uh, and the sun is shining on it. That's the thing that really counts. Now, defining now in two different places, that's really quite difficult. So at the practical level, Einstein taught us how to do that. You, you measure uh, the time it takes light to get from me to you and back again, and you take half of that and, and then that uh, can be used to define when it's exactly the same time. That's, that's Einstein's definition. That, that takes into account really what the whole universe is doing. You have to take into account the whole universe if you want to define now. The whole universe. So, the whole universe, in your opinion, change? Oh, yes, very much so, because um, it, since we started talking, certainly there's been a, a change here, because my mug of tea, which I'm drinking while talking to you, is now only three quarters full. So, this is just a small change in the universe, but there's, I can feel sorts of changes going on outside the window, the leaves on the trees are moving around, the branches are blowing in the wind, and certainly we know that everything in the universe is moving relative to everything else, so that's for sure. Nothing is at rest, everything is moving relative to everything else. Uh, I would say that the, if, if there was no change, if things didn't change, it would be meaningless to talk about the passage of time. This is, this is different from what Isaac Newton said. Isaac Newton said time would pass even if nothing happened, if nothing changed, time would pass. And I think this is definitely wrong. It, it would be meaningless to speak of time if change did not exist. Mm -hmm. 
तो मेरा पीड़ा पे लग गया है पातो पियन पातो पियन तो कोई कहीं जा descansó, se olvidó, se paró, se paró, y después se enfermó él, la caja fue para él. <risa> Nadie <risa> sabe para quién es la caja. Sí, ah, Pedri, ah, sí, ese fue, él se enfermó y, y ya no, y ya no se paró, y la reina se se paró. ¿Quieres es otro, pan, el, otro panecito? Con este, con este, con este, gracias. Es por eso que se dice, hombre pone, Dios del pan. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Ah. So, Julian, what is for you eternity? Uh, eternity would be a situation where nothing changes. In fact, I would say each instant of time is eternity because it doesn't change. If you take a, if you take a photograph, a snapshot, it's frozen. It, it doesn't change. Of course, the, the paper on which it's printed might decay, but that's not really changing the, the photograph. The, the photograph is something which is unchanged, but so that that is eternal, but because it doesn't change, you experience it in an instant. If, 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 I, if you close your eyes and then open them just for a split second and close them again, you will have, you will have seen something. And in a way, what you Yo see will not ever change. So that is eternal. Gracias, but at the same gracias. time, it seems to have lasted for no time at all. So I think it's, it's quite strange. I would say eternity and no time at all, uh, an, an absolute instant, are the same thing. Because it corresponds to nothing changing at all. What will you or how will you define static universe? A static universe would be one which doesn't change and exists only just one shape, like, say, a triangle. You, it, we could take this as the simplest model of a universe which consists of just three particles. Well, in one instant, they would form a triangle. Now, if that universe doesn't, if, if that triangle doesn't change, then I would call that a, a static universe. What I think the universe is really like is lots of triangles. If we just stick with the simplest model, I think that all possible triangles would be present. And in reality, the universe, each, uh, it wouldn't be a triangle. It would be something much, much more complicated. Lots and lots of configurations or shapes of the universe. And some of them contain me with a memory of our discussion up to a certain point in our discussion and then there are other ones which contain me with memories of the discussion up to now and i think they both exist but i'm only my, my consciousness is is only is, is different in each of them so each of those two me and each of those two things this is now because this is what i'm conscious of but My conscious experience is, is constantly changing. And so I think this is time passing, but I would say it's not time passing. I would just say it's my consciousness is in, is in different configurations and, and therefore experiences different things. اللي غدا لي ربع سنين أقل حسيان الحاجة تتوارغي حوجة 
Et c'est au début de 7 ou 8 ans. Et gars. Et euh. Et je suis dans la voiture avec moi. Je comprends ce qu'on a. Mi sueño es un sueño amarillo. Donde por ser, ya flotamos. Soñé que estaba en un campo todo verde. De la tarde en Berlín. Donde hasta ahora no conozco. Soñé que estaba en un campo todo verde. Si ça me rêve. Let's imagine a timeless universe, and uh, in a timeless universe, what would be the role of history and stories? I would say my personal belief is that it, there are all these different configurations of, of the universe which can be incredibly complicated. If you think about it, just think of a good novel like Tolstoy's War and Peace. You can pick that up as a book. It's black letters on white paper. And the whole story is in that book. But that's all there. And it, it really hasn't changed since Tolstoy wrote it. But it's all there. So, uh, and it's a history. It's very much about the history of, of, of Russia and France and of people within it. So it's a very rich story. But in some senses, that's all there in one static book. Now, that's simplifying things a bit. But it, This is the way in which I think history exists, really, or, or the evidence for history. It exists in, in the present. The past is, is a deduction that we make from the present because there are so many things that seem to agree in the present that, that there are correlations, as scientists call them, that we, that we think the past does, did happen. It, it's because I have memories and they they make sense all that suggests to me that the past did exist but the only evidence i have for it from is from the present it's from the consistency of things within the present that we deduce that the past did happen i would say if you if you go back to what newton said and what einstein also more or less said is that there are things in the world and in addition there is time. So there are things in the world and the things in the world change as time passes. And that is what I think is unnecessary. I would just say that there are things in the world and their relationships change. There is nothing in addition which you could call time. If you tried to find that extra thing which people intuitively feel is time, it just isn't there. Let, just take your one's own personal experience. I think most people have the feeling that, that first of all, time is passing, and as it passes, what they see, what they experience changes. And I think All that happens is that they experience things and, and one, what follows is not what was there before. So it's, it's always something new, 
but there is no sense in which uh, you could say that time is passing at any rate or something. If, if you can see that it doesn't mean anything to say how fast time is passing, because if suppose you tried to imagine that all your experiences, absolutely all of your experiences were speeded up and, and were going twice as fast, well, you couldn't notice it because the clocks outside would go twice as fast, your internal body clock would go twice as fast, the operations in your brain would go twice as fast, and in the end, everything would seem exactly the same to you. So time is a completely redundant concept. All you need to know is from your psychological point of view, is what follows what, and, and what is it that actually comes? What, what is the succession of things? Life is like a, a continuous succession of snapshots, and the whole of reality is in that continuous succession of snapshots. You don't need to ask at which rate, shall we say, the, the movie is, is, is shown in the cinema. It's all in the individual stills. Julian, what's your opinion about the idea of wasting time? I'm certainly not at all in favor of wasting time. I would be very much in favor of what I would say, enjoying time. Now, by time, I mean any instant of time. In fact, my, my idea of time is, is much richer than most people's. Most people think there's just time is one dimensional. There's just one instant which follows another. I, I have many more instants of time because all of my instants of time are every possible configuration that the universe can be in. And I've been very lucky. I, I find that life is very rich. I keep on finding myself in very interesting instants of time. So I think we should enjoy them. We should appreciate them. We should try and get as much out of them as we possibly can. Now, I don't think there's anything wrong with just sitting uh, and enjoying things. That, that for me is not wasting time, that is treasuring time. That's, that's seeing that time is very valuable. There's almost nothing I enjoy more than sitting in my garden and, and just uh, being there. I don't think you need to, the concept of time as something independent of the trees and the flowers and you and me is just redundant, not needed. So let's get rid of it. Let's stop worrying about time and just enjoy the trees and the flowers and chatting to each other. Oh, 
There are trips that are like life itself. There are trips that are like life itself. There are trips that are like life itself. For the end of this conversation, Julian, what time is it? I think it's, uh, I'll go and have another look at the clock. We have a very beautiful clock out here in the middle of, of England. Learnbold, yes, it's it's now about 20 to 6 according to the clock, but that is, the hands on the clock are there, and what is it? I suppose it's 20 to 11, is it, in, according to your clock in, in Mexico? Actually, yeah. Yeah, I see. So we, we agree on that. So the fact that we say it's seven hours difference, that's nothing to do with a difference of time. It's just where the sun is in the sky. That's all it is. Mm -hmm. 